Enphase versus Solar Edge versus Tesla. Which is better? Hey everyone, Deal here with Pacific Sun Technologies. I feel that I've talked a lot on battery storage options and solar panel manufacturers in recent weeks, but I haven't talked about solar inverter options, which is relatively important because without the inverter, you can't convert the DC power of your solar panels to AC power that everything in your home uses. So today's video is a simple comparison that'll help you decide which is best for your situation. But before I get into it, please be sure to subscribe to the channel. It only takes a second to click that button down below. And while you're at it, why don't you click that little bell icon too? That way you'll receive notification on future videos just like this one. And if you're someone that's interested in going solar and you live in our area, Southern California, don't forget to visit us online to receive a hassle-free quote. We make it easy and affordable for you to go solar. And it never hurts to get another bid. You might just be surprised at what we have to offer compared to our competitors. All right, let's talk solar inverters. I've done several videos over the years on microinverters, optimized inverters, and solar edge, and old school string inverters. Heck, I recently just did a video on the Tesla inverter, which, spoiler, it's a string inverter with no panel optimization like solar edge. But these videos didn't compare the products side by side, so I thought it would be a perfect time to do so, especially with the release of Tesla's own inverter. But before I dive in to comparing these three manufacturers, I wanna give you a quick overview of how each of these differs. Starting with Enphase, because they're a very, very popular option among solar installers and homeowners, and they're our preferred option as well. Enphase microinverters are basically shrunken down central inverters and are designed for one panel to be connected to one microinverter. This allows each solar panel to act independently of one another and features a plenty full of perks that I'll be going over soon. Moving on to SolarEdge, which is just as popular of an option as Enphase, but they are both very different in their approaches. See, solar edge systems are considered optimized systems because they use a special device called an optimizer that's attached to every panel. And these optimizers are then strung together and then go to the central inverter where that's the location the energy is converted. The optimizer allows for each panel to act independently of one another, much like microinverters, but remember, they have one key difference and they are not converting the energy up on the roof at the solar panel, but instead they are just regulating the voltage and sending this energy to the central inverter to do all that. And last but not least, Tesla Solar Inverter. This is a relatively new product and I'm only able to go off of the information available through Tesla's website and a handful of conversations with people in the industry. If you're someone that recently got a Tesla inverter and you have a copy of your spec sheets, please send us an email of it. I would love to take a look at it. I, I would love to learn more about this product. The Tesla inverter is not a microinverter, that's a given. And it's, from what I understand, not an optimized inverter, but rather just a old school string inverter. Now, string inverters are relatively simple. You string your solar panels together, you know, you connect them one by one, and then you connect them to one of the inputs in the inverter. I mean, that's it. There's no optimizers. There's nothing in between the panels and the inverter. I'm very familiar with this technology because it's one of the oldest in the industry. And it was used a lot 10 years ago or more when solar technology wasn't as affordable as it is today. We're talking six, seven, eight or more dollars per watt. I mean, you would literally get a quote for a five kilowatt solar system and it would be $40,000. So solar has definitely come down a lot in the last 10 years, but there is a reason the solar industry as a whole shifted away from this technology. And you'll see why in the side-by-side -side comparison I'm about to go over. Now, I had to really think hard on the categories to create 
so it'd be as fair of a comparison as I could make it. I really wanted to make it clear of the advantages and the disadvantages of each of these technologies. So here are the categories I came up with. Efficiency, optimization, monitoring, and the warranty. Starting with efficiency, because what you may not realize is that whenever you convert energy, be it DC to AC or AC to DC, you're losing energy in the conversion. You want the efficiency of an inverter to be as high as it possibly can, but you'll never have 100% efficiency. The technology just isn't there, and theoretically, I don't even think it's achievable. You're always going to lose energy. But N-phase microinverters offer a 97.5% peak efficiency rating and a CEC weighted efficiency rating of 97%. Solar edge converters offer a 99.2% peak efficiency and CEC weighted efficiency of 99%. But since solar edge uses optimizers, because that was just the inverter, we have to take those into account as well. So you actually have to add them together and then divide them to get your average. So the Solar Edge optimizers have a maximum efficiency rating of 99.5% and a CEC weighted efficiency of 98.8%. If you add these together and then you divide them in half, you end up with a peak efficiency rating of 99.35% and a CEC weighted efficiency rating of 98.9%. Tesla has only published a single efficiency rating. It's 97.5%, and I'm not sure if this is this peak efficiency rating uh, or the CEC weighted efficiency rating. I'm guessing it's the peak. Moving on to optimization. Now, optimization can mean a couple different things when you're talking about solar. We're going to focus on the two most important forms of optimization, system optimization and shade optimization. System optimization refers to the entire system's ability to, to turn on sooner like at sunrise and turn off later at sunset. This has to do with the system's startup voltage and operating voltage range. Since each panel acts independently, the microinverter has a lower voltage window which allows them to turn on earlier and shut off later. Shade optimization is rather straightforward as it has to do with shading of the solar panels. Again, each panel acts independently, which ensures if a panel or two or three or heck, half of your system is shaded, it would not affect the performance of the other panels that are not experiencing any shade. This means you're always producing the most power possible at all times. Solar Edge handles both of these in a very similar fashion to Enphase, but there are some drawbacks to their voltage window, as the central inverter does require a bit more voltage from the entire system to turn on. This will likely be a difference of maybe 30 minutes per day in system production. It could be a little more in the winters, but more than likely it averages out to about 30 minute difference. Tesla, on the other hand, has neither of these because it's a string inverter without really any form of optimization. Without complete spec sheets, I don't know the voltage window, but I would assume it's relative to that of a traditional string inverter without optimization, which means the system has a high voltage starting window to turn on and to stay operational, which means you're missing out on potential solar production. I would have to estimate somewhere between an hour to an hour and a half every day. It could be more, but you're probably in that range. As for the shade optimization, this system does offer string optimization, which isn't the same, but it's better than nothing. So let me explain what string optimization is. Now we're referring to the solar panels connected together when we're talking about strings. So you could have four, eight, 10, 12 solar panels connected together and that would be considered a string. Now each string acts independently of one another when they're connected to their own input on the inverter. So say you had a string of six panels and then you had another string of 10 panels and one of the panels in say string 10 
experience some shade. Well, all those panels that are connected together in that string 10 are going to be affected. They're all going to lose performance. But the string of six panels will not be affected by that string of 10 because they're their own string. So while you do have some shade optimization here, it's not the ideal type of optimization to have. Now, this kind of leads me into the monitoring of the systems because optimization really does tie into monitoring. Enphase and SolarEdge both offer consumers and the installers full access to these systems, which includes module level monitoring. The importance of module level monitoring is the ability to track each panel's performance and ensures they're all working. Enphase does have a leg up on SolarEdge for their monitoring with the microinverter technology because it's one microinverter or one panel. So if either of those stops working, it doesn't affect the rest of the system. It's just that one micro and that one panel. Now this is partially true for SolarEdge when you're looking at it from the optimizer and the solar panel aspect but the same can't be said at the inverter level because if that goes down, the entire system goes down. As for Tesla string inverter, the monitoring is what you've probably grown accustomed to from Tesla. It's very simple. You see your total energy production and that's pretty much it. You're, you're not going to really get any more data out of the solar system from Tesla's app. Tesla does say the system using their inverter has string level monitoring, but I'm not sure if the consumer gets access to that or it's just something for a Tesla service tech. Either way, Tesla is way behind technologically speaking because you would have no idea if a panel is working right or isn't working or if you're experiencing excessive shading on any portion of your system because you don't have any of that type of data. And if the central inverter goes down, the Tesla inverter goes down, well, just like SolarEdge, the entire system goes down. We're nearing the end of this video, so just bear with me. And this last topic is very important one. So let's talk about warranty. The last thing any of us want from any solar system is for it to fail, but sadly, the inverter is one of the most likely components to fail, so having a good warranty is very important, and having someone available to service it is also equally important. Enphase microinverters offer the best warranty in the industry with a standard 25 years. They also have a very, very robust certified installer network, so you'll always have someone to service your system, whether or not your original installer is still in business. SolarEdge optimized inverters have two warranties because we're dealing with two different components. The optimizer comes with a standard 25 year warranty while the inverter comes with a 12 year warranty but that can be upgraded to 25 years for peace of mind. Tesla's string inverter, well it appears to only come with a standard 12 and a half year warranty. It doesn't look like Tesla is offering an extension of this warranty, and I couldn't really find anything that stated they plan to. After comparing these key metrics, I feel Enphase is still the safest and best option. Sure, you're losing a little bit of power with this efficiency rating, but I feel it's making it up because the system can turn on earlier in the day than SolarEdge or Tesla's solar inverter and it stays on later in the evenings than those two options as well. Not to mention Enphase has a pretty kick-ass monitoring portal compared to SolarEdge and Tesla. Just check out my previous video and let's not forget about warranty. I mean 25 years is a very long time for a component to have a warranty for. I mean, anything you buy, you buy a computer, you buy a car, you, you buy anything. I don't know anything that comes with a 25 year warranty. And Enphase, just that's standard. That's what their microinverters have come with for the last, I wanna say like 10 or 11 years. And to be honest with you, we've probably only replaced maybe 50 units, probably less than that, over the last 10 years and we've done thousands of solar installations so that's incredible 
I don't think you should dismiss SolarEdge at all because they are still a great alternative depending on your situation. I know I didn't go into too great of details about you know where SolarEdge might have an advantage and I'll be doing a video on the new SolarEdge Energy Hub with Prisma Technology. So if you are really interested in SolarEdge and their technology, be sure to subscribe to the channel to learn more about their new inverters because they're really innovating and thinking about how their inverters can do more for consumers than just convert solar energy. They basically are making units that you can have a hot water heater connected directly to them, their smart home integrated. There's a lot of little things that they're doing to make their inverter more consumer friendly. It's not just a box, it, it can do more in, in the future. As for Tesla, well, I really don't know what to think. To me, it feels like Tesla is using their consumer's uh, view of them as an innovative company against them to sell an inferior solar product because people don't know the difference realistically. That's the point of this video is to help you understand the difference between these styles of, of components. You have micro inverters, optimized inverters, and string inverters. But you know, it probably doesn't have anything to do with that as much as it has to do with Tesla just trying to be the cheapest equipment manufacturer or provider in the industry for solar. And I think it's cool Tesla made an inverter I'm just really shocked that they have these brilliant minds at their company and they the best thing they could come out with was an outdated string inverter. You know, that, that just shocks me. Well, that's it for this week's video. Thanks for watching. If you're someone that's interested in going solar and you live in our area, Southern California, then visit us online to receive a hassle-free quote. We make it so easy and affordable to switch to renewable energy, you'll regret not doing it sooner. Plus, we offer some of the best technology to our customers. Thanks again for watching. Until next time.